Welcome to Outdoor Madness, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I am Kerry Clark. All right, a lot of you guys have asked me where you ride your side-by-side. -side. Well, when I'm not riding behind my house, I love to take off and go out to the Mojave Desert. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take you guys with me. That's where I'm going right now. So here's how we get there. Right now, we're on the Cajon Pass. And all that snow you saw was the mountains, mountain high, the ski resort, right? Well, this is the way you go to get to the Mojave Desert. So you'll hop on the 215 freeway and you'll head north, go up the Cajon Pass, and then you turn off on Highway 395. And Highway 395 will take us all the way out to the Mojave Desert. Now this town we're in right now, this is Analando, okay? And this is on Highway 395. If any of you guys are my age, you remember back in the 80s, early 90s, I believe it was, they used to have a race called the Analando Grand Prix. I think it was Ty Davis. He was like the king of the Analando Grand Prix, but uh, just another little town that you cruise through. Um, it's really, really grown. I mean, there used to be nothing here. You would drive through this place and there might be maybe a couple of burger stands and some, some gas stations, but it's really, it's really built up now. I think they even have Walmart here now. So, but uh, anyway, this is the highway you stay on right here, 395. And this is going to take us all the way out where we're going to stop and ride today. So right now, what we're doing is we're coming in to Kramer Junction. Kramer Junction is like a four corners. I like this spot because if you need to stop anywhere and maybe grab a bite, go to the bathroom, get some munchies to take with you, this is a good spot. So you guys can see all these flowers. We get this rain, man, and they're just... They're just everywhere. So like I say, this is just right off, this is just right off the highway, right off of 395. So we haven't even gotten out in the desert yet. I can only imagine what it's gonna be like out there. So pretty neat. No, no wind. I mean, it's just, today's just a gorgeous day. I guess I just can't say it enough. But my truck, oh my gosh, look at, the butterflies are back. Those painted lady butterflies, look at this. I mean, they're just everywhere, they're all over. Oh man. And they're just starting up, you know, so. It's amazing, it's amazing what the rain does. All right, let's get out of here. So I just want to take a little bit of time to thank all of you guys so much who have subscribed to our YouTube channel, Outdoor Madness TV. And of course, everyone who has been supporting us on Facebook also, Outdoor Madness. I just hope that the show is putting a smile on everyone's face. Hopefully all of you guys are staying safe doing this uh, during this pandemic. I know a lot of you guys are quarantined where I live, we're not quarantined, but of course we have to practice the social distancing. We have to wear our mask, uh, stay away from people as much as we can, and that's what we're doing. But uh, hopefully once this thing is over, the show is, is going to inspire you guys and get you guys excited. And you can just hook your trailers up or just get outside and just enjoy life. That's what this show is all about. So thank you guys so much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. That's how we keep the channel growing. And, uh, that's how we keep putting new videos up. And let's ride. Yeah. But now here's what I love. Because there's another spot, okay? I'm sure all of you guys that are in 
Southern California where I live, you have heard Ocotillo Wells. Ocotillo Wells is a really popular place too and I've been there a few times, but I prefer the Mojave Desert because there's more to do and more to see. And I hate, absolutely hate the drive to Ocotillo Wells. I hate going through those twists and turns. I, I just don't like it. So, um, but what's nice about uh, out here in the Mojave Desert, there are so many things to see. Uh, so many abandoned gold mines, mining camps, uh, and you've got just endless miles of riding. You also have Dove Springs, you have Jawbone Canyon, you've got places like Burl Schmidt Tunnel, Bickle Camp, all these places as you're riding on these trails out in the desert, you can stop and see these places. And that's what I like to do. I don't like to just, just hop in my, my side by side and just floor and drive you know, through the desert and not be able to stop and get out and do things. That's what I enjoy. Not only that, but this time of year, because we've had so much rain out here in Southern California, the desert is just popping. I mean, it is just coming alive. So uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna to go to some places that I've been to before, but we're also gonna see what we can find, like new trails to explore, see what else, just see what else we can find. That's what I love to do. Another old building right here. No matter how many times I come out here, you can see all the tailings. I mean, there's tailings everywhere. But all these old mine shafts all out here, pretty cool. Okay, you guys, so right there, see the highway? There's Highway 395. I'm not that far off the highway. Got a little wind noise right now. Anyway, Ransburg is right over here, so you see these trails. We're gonna cut through these trails and we're gonna head right into the town of Ransburg. All right, you guys. It's time for me to give you the historic lowdown of this area. First of all, it's called Atolia and the Stringer District. So since 1896, miners and prospectors in the Stringer District, which is southeast of Randsburg, had been 
cursing this unwanted appearance of a creamy white substance in their gold pans and their dry washers that was interfering with the gold recovery. Well, that nasty stuff was nicknamed Heavy Spar. The Stringer District was so named because of the many rich gold quartz stringers. And around 1904 is when that nasty white stuff that was previously tossed out was discovered to be shelite, which is the ore of tungsten, tungsten steel. Well, back then there was a mine called the Papoose Mine, and that mine became the leading shelite mine in the world. Ransburg had something to shout about again. Her second boom was on. In later years, the price of tungsten dropped and it was imported cheaper from China. The famous Mojave Gold Nugget was reportedly found a couple of miles from here by Ty Paulson in 1977. Listen to this, while he was metal detecting. Can you imagine that, Greg? Just think if you found a gold nugget like that with your metal detector. So a replica of this gold nugget is up the road at the Owl Cafe Museum in Red Mountain. The original is at the Los Angeles County Natural History Museum, along with many other beautiful Gold Rush nuggets that they have as part of their collection. And you can also Google Mojave Nugget for more information on it. You see, that's what I love about this area. There's so much history when it comes to mining and just so much to see. This is still Ransburg. I've never been back back here before though. This is uh this is new to me. But we're on the east side, kind of like behind the town. And this is all part of the Stringer district that I was talking about earlier. We're just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna explore all around this area and see what I can find.
right, we got to check this place out. So this is new too. Now, this looks like, like some type of, I don't know, like an old, just another old mining camp, a part of the, where they were processing the ore maybe. I mean, look at this thing. This is crazy. You know, this is what I hate though. Why do people always have to find these places and then just bring all their garbage out and just dump it everywhere? I don't understand. All right, let's go in here and see what we can find. Man, look at all the books. Wow, this, this is crazy. I mean, there's just books. Look at, there's just books everywhere. I gotta make sure I don't fall through the floor, the floor here, though. I don't know what's underneath me. Something's gotta be holding these books up. I mean, there's just books everywhere. Crazy. Public administration. Federal reporter. Pretty crazy. Down here. There's just books and books and books everywhere. Plus a bunch of other garbage, but. Is this one right here? <sighs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, man. But interesting. I just love exploring in all these old places like this. I just wish there wasn't so much garbage, you know? I mean, you can look up. There's an old engine right there. It looks like an old steam engine. You can see the tank or an old air compressor. You know, it looks like it might have been an old air compressor. All these books, though. This is just nuts. What is this? Interesting. I want to get a little closer over here. Just gotta make sure I don't fall through. Yeah, it's just, you know, all the old, look at this. So this was like an old winch, an old cable. I mean, it's just buried. See here, there's a cable right there. This is a spool. And it's going all the way up. You can see that. All the way up through there. Yeah, that hole right up there where the cable goes. So, what this was used for, I don't know. It would be nice if, if all this garbage wasn't in here. You know, you could see with this, I mean, look at, look at this one over here. Look at this big old mill or whatever that's over here. Let's see if we can get over there without killing myself. Man, look at this thing. Wow. I mean, this thing is huge. Go around this way. Hey, look at this sucker. Yeah, I mean that thing is huge. There's just so many, 
somebody's just been, people have just been bringing all their garbage out here and dumping everything, you know? Wow. Nuts. Look at this contraption right here. I don't know what that was, but it had some kind of belts on it. You can see the rollers right there. And the gear right there where it was spinning something. Some old tanks here. It's like a water tank. Look at this. Looks like an old Mercedes. Let's see what this thing is. Yep. It's an old Mercedes. Somebody abandoned out here. I wonder what year that thing is. Some old equipment down here. There's the Arctic Cat over there. Look at this. Looks like an old tractor. Look at this thing, man. Jeez. Wow. That's like some kind of... Like an old tractor. You know, you got your... Here's here, right here. Probably to work the blade. It probably had a blade on it or something at one time, I'm sure. Wow. Oh, look at that. That's where the engine and everything was right there. The tranny connected. Leaf springs going right there. Wow. Hey, there's no telling how old this thing is. And that is some solid steel, man. Wow. Crazy. All right, so take a good look at this, guys. This is a mine shaft right here. Now, you remember this cable? When we were in the other building where that winch was, this is the, ca the cable that connects to that winch. So... They had to be pulling some type of ore out of here. So you can see these rails right here. So these rails, there had to be some type of a bucket system or some type of a, a cart that went all the way up to the top of this. Okay. And this is some type of a wooden chute or like a silo. And they were pulling that ore out of there up to the top of that chute and dumping it down. Um, that's what I'm thinking, because right here, you take a look in here, this is definitely part of that mine shaft. So remember, this is the Stringer District, all of this, and it was called the Stringer District because of the quartz or the gold stringers that were in the quartz. So they could have been following that here, or this could have been tux tungsten. Not sure, but either way, they were mining over here and pulling that stuff out. Really neat. Okay, so right here, if you guys remember when I was in this building, I was upstairs to the right. Well, this is downstairs right here, the lower portion of the building. I tell you, man, the history around here when it comes to gold mining is, is really something. All right, there's one other place I wanna go before we head back to the truck. So we're gonna head east. We're gonna go back across Highway 395 we're going to hightail it to the dry lake bed. There's some water out there, but the drive out here is really neat. You can just open up your side by side and it's really nice out there. There should be a lot of yellow wildflowers out there. So let's go. Oh, yeah.
up, baby. Just me, the cat, and the desert. <laughs> no coronavirus out here. air on your face ah smell the wildflowers <laughs> I'm Gary Clark for Outdoor Madness thanks so much for tuning in everyone and we'll see you next time And there's nobody out here. That's the thing, no one. So you don't, you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> there's no coronavirus out here unless, unless the plants and the wildflowers are gonna give me the coronavirus. It's the only thing I can think of.